forgot I'm holding the mic now because everybody's holding their mics nowadays. I can kind of understand it because it's probably better you know, audio quality, but still. <sighs> I did have one New Year's resolution this year, which was to use more eyelashes, but mm, I already broke that one. <laughs> Oh, are we recording? Hey, hey, it's your dandy, Candy. And I thought we'd try something new going into 24 by doing some video essays. We're going to start with art-related topics, movements, genres, artists I like, stuff like that, and then we'll eventually deviate from there. I should preface this by saying I am by no means an art historian or expert in any of these things. I'm just an artist with an interest. And these essays are intended more as a cursory examination rather than an in-depth analysis. So if you're expecting like some kind of 12-hour deep dive into something, it's, it's, that's not going to happen here. Um, no, just, just, just no. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and kick this off by talking about one of the most influential art movements of the 20th century, Dadaism. Dadaism, or Dada as it's better known, was an avant-garde art movement that spread throughout Europe in the 1910s as a direct reaction to World War I. Though informal with no real central hierarchy, the movement featured several prominent artists across a broad range of creative fields such as author and sound poetry pioneer Hugo Ball, who is considered the founder of Dadaism, poet, performance artist, and the co-founder of the Cabaret Voltaire, which was a short-lived little speakeasy that the, uh, the local artists, including a lot of Dada movement members, would go to frequently. Emmy Hennings, painter, sculptor, and chess enthusiast Marcel Duchamp, photo montage pioneer and feminist icon Hannah Hope, poet, playwright, and art critic Tristan Zara, and painter, film producer, and art historian Hans Richter. Now that's just a small sample of all the documented contributing members I came across while researching this. Uh, there's plenty more we could have rattled off, but I didn't want to get lost in the weeds doing a roll call. The name Dada has multiple origins to it, which we absolutely love. If one is to have a past, I would prefer it to be multiple choice, with one claiming it was derived as sounding like the first words a child says, another being it's how one would say yes yes in Romanian. And the more widely accepted origin is that it was picked at random out of a French to German dictionary at 6 p.m. on February 6, 1916 at the Café de la Trace in Zurich by contributing artist Richard Hulsenbeck with a letter opener landing on the French word for hobby horse. Whatever the origin, the point of Dada was to reject the logic and reason and aestheticism of the bourgeoisie nationalist and colonialist interests which most, of its, uh, which most of its contributing members viewed as a main component for the cause of the war, through absurdity, irrationality, shock performances, and anti-bourgeoisie, anti-nationalist sentiments. With public demonstrations, poetry, art manifestos, music, and so on, Dada sought to expand what society considered art through anti-art, a concept that was attributed to Marcel Duchamp. The concept of anti-art is simple. Whatever an artist considers art is art. A urinal on its side. Art. A banana taped to a wall. Art. A middle-aged adult dressed as a clown talking to their phone in an empty room, well seasoned with guilt and regrets, doing their best to smile and ignore the existential dread of one's own mortality and their ultimate purpose in life. Art. Anti-art asks the question, what is art, and its purpose if it even has one, and where does art begin and end? Keep in mind, before Dadaism came around, only the wealthy could really afford art and therefore dictated what was and wasn't considered art. Okay, and if you couldn't paint, sculpt, write, or compose a certain way, and you weren't a certain gender, faith, social class, or ethnicity, you were SOL entirely on ever seeing your work getting seen or heard uh, outside of your own room. This led to Dadaism having its detractors, including one critic from American Art News who claimed, Oh, it was the thickest, most paralyzing, and most destructive thing that has ever originated from the brain of man. <laughs> and several of its exhibitions being shut down and banned due to their shocking and scandalous nature. One of the more controversial exhibits being at a pub in Cologne in around 1920, where participants at a local pub were led past rows of urinals as a woman in a communion dress read lewd poetry out loud. Sounds like, more like a average day on social media from here. You can just imagine that one news, that, that, one, that one critic 
going in there and being like, oh my god, she's talking about breasts. <laughs> now, the usage of shock and sensationalism in their work was deliberate as a means to spark conversation and draw attention to the issues that they were trying to address. This was a protest to a war that was as equally shocking to the modern world, mind you. So it makes total sense that the rebuttal would be just as shocking. Dada as, Dada as a movement ended around 1924, with most of its contributors moving on to other venues like surrealism and modernism, and leaving Europe for the United States as the threat of the Second World War loomed in the horizon. Not everyone was able to escape those horrors, however, as Hitler was actively persecuting people that he referred to as artists who created degenerate art in what is inarguably one of the most oppressive times in modern art world history next to the Stalinist era Soviet Union. A campaign that mostly targeted foreigners, Freemasons, communists, and Jews. Artists who were accused of creating degenerate art would have their pieces removed from state-owned galleries, were hit with sanctions like being removed from teaching positions if they occupied one, being forbidden from having their works exhibited or sold, and in some cases being forbidden from producing art entirely in Germany, and ultimately were declared enemies of the state and faced exile or being sent to concentration camps like Dada contributors Otto Freinlich and Walter Cerner. Though the movement had ended, the legacy of Dada lived on throughout various anti-art collectives, social justice and civil rights movements, and pop culture. The Ultra series features an alien race called the Dadas, which were directly inspired. Grant Morrison drew inspiration from Dadaism in his work on Animal Man and Doom Patrol. The Talking Heads song E Zimbra was an adaptation of the poem Gaji Beri Bimba by Hugo Ball. And David Bowie and Kurt Cobain were known for using the cut-up technique popularized by Dada poetry for writing song lyrics. And the 70s punk scene was heavily inspired by its anti-bourgeoisie, anti-establishment settlements. That was just a few examples. Mm -mm -mm. Those are just a few examples. Those are just a few examples. Okay, cool. <sighs> and those are just a few examples. <laughs> Dadaism laid the groundworks for sound poetry, interpretive dance, collage, photo montage, ensemblages, ready mades, and paved the way for postmodernism, surrealism, and conceptualism. And conceptualism. Like I said at the beginning, Dadaism is one of the most influential art movements of the 20th century. And that's because Dada made art more easily accessible to the general public and removed the powers of the elites over what was and wasn't considered art, placing that control back into the hands of the creators and giving voices to the otherwise voiceless. It was an innovative cultural renaissance that broadened the range of expressing oneself, that pulled back the curtains and asked questions about society and our collective and individual roles in it that honestly we're still asking today. A world without Dadaism would be a world of committees and rules of what you can and can't write or paint or say or think. A world full of bland landscapes and peacock debutantes, glorified portraits of historic battlefields focused on surface-level patriotism and valor, completely ignoring the, the ugly atrocities of war. A world of squeaky clean, beige carpet blind conformity full of white marble statues where having an imagination or even a thought that deviates from the norm should be stifled and silenced and shunned out of fear one might offend the ruling class's sensibilities. After all, as Hans Richter once said, if art is to appeal to the sensibilities, Dada was intended to offend. Dadaism was a protest, a statement. As, mem as, as members later reflected, it was a phenomenon that burst forth in the midst of the post-war economic and moral crisis, a savior, a monster, which would lay waste to everything in its path. A true perception and criticism of the times that it was forged in by a group of creatives who viewed the war as nothing more than an insane spectacle of collective homicide. It was a systematic work of destruction and demoralization that in the end became nothing more than an act of sacrilege. Now going into this, I didn't know a lot about the details of Dadaism. I had a broad idea of what Dadaism was. But through researching this, I learned a great deal more, and I hope you did too, or that we at least piqued your interest in learning more. Uh, this was pretty fun. It was pretty fun to do. A little book reporting. Wigs a mess. There was parts that I was debating about. I, I, kept, I kept going back and forth on what to take in and what to put back. Like, I would have loved to have gone on a little more about the Cabaret Voltaire. Maybe we'll do that in another one of these little things. And I kind of wanted to, I kept stopping myself from going on a side tangent about the whole degenerate art thing. Because as I looked into it, Hitler had taken, seized like over 
thousands of art pieces, including stuff from Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, and Vincent van Gogh. And he took about 650 of these pieces and put them on a display exhibit in Munich called the Degenerate Art Display where it was a traveling thing where they had these all put up all wishy-washy sideways with graffiti scrawled across them to insult them publicly to, to, to mock the artists and the art. I mean, some of these pieces uh, were burnt in bonfires. I'm sure you've probably seen the infamous photos and pictures of all the book burnings. Well, the art was also burned as well, and some of it's just lost to time entirely. So, yeah. It just goes to show you how powerful art is if a petulant man like Hitler was that so worked up about it. And how bleak the world would be if only the powers that be were the ones in control of everything that you see, hear, speak, know, and feel. I think it's a good place to leave it at there. If you like this video, you know the Dilly Dill. And if you're interested in some of our art, you can head on over to our Etsy shop, etsy.com slash shop slash candy dandy art. We've got some new pieces on the way as of the recording of this video, so they should be up pretty soon. First come, first serve. Go on and get it. Yes, yes. This has been Candy Dandy. Thank you for your time. And I hope you have a good one. <laughs> I don't need technical difficulties right now. No, that's going in the blooper reel. It looked like that one witch at the end of fucking American Horror Story that was like yelling, Valencia! And I decided we try something different this year going into 24 by making some bleh rather than a bleh. Let's get this uh, talking by one uh, about the uh, And the co founder of a uh, uh, little bit. Now, the day. Uh, now you see the day that you do the thing. Never mind. Is that it was picked out random out of a, a concept that was attributed to my uh, and without uh, and without out of the way. Yeah, we're leaving that one in. Fuck it. Poet performance are now popped my peas. This lad. We've got some new pieces on the way, darling. The sickest, most paralyzing, and most destructive thing that has ever originated from the brain of man. <laughs> Yes. Oh my god, she's talking about breasts! Mm. Oh, Lord. Uh, maybe. Etsy.com slash shop shows candy dandy art.